Jewish Education and Media is pleased to present L'Chaim, a program that highlights the people, issues, and events of importance to the Jewish community. Now here is your host, Rabbi Mark Golub. I'm Mark Golub. And if you watch L'Chaim often, you know that one of the things we like to do the most is introduce you to people who are doing creative and wonderful things on the world you were seeing, even though their names may not be household names. You may not know them. But we want you to meet them and understand their story and appreciate, again, what they're doing to enhance Jewish life for all of us. And normally they run in a certain age group that you're used to seeing whenever you tune into Shalom TV. Today is very special for me because I get to introduce you to a very special younger Jewish leader. It is my pleasure to welcome to this table Aaron Aharon Watson. And Aharon, it is so lovely of you to take some time to come and meet with us and to let me share your story with our viewers. Thank you for joining it's us. It's my pleasure and thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. It's an honor to be here. Um, so let's just do a little bit of your own Jewish background first of all. Where were you born? I was born in Anglewood, New Jersey in 1991. Oh, so how makes, old are you now? That makes me 22. You're 22. Where are you in life right now? I'm at Yeshiva University. I'm a junior studying finance in Sysim School of Business. Um, how do you like it? I love it. Do you? I love it, yeah. It's, it's excellent. Excellent school. Excellent uh -huh. program. You like the other students you're with? Lo love the students there. That's great lovely. student body. Professors are good? Professors are great. So you're very happy to be where you are. Yes, 100%. Okay. When you grew up, you grew up in New Jersey? I grew up in New Jersey, in Teaneck, New Jersey, for 17 years. Okay. And do you have siblings? I ha Yes. I have one older brother. Uh, I have one younger brother who's uh, 15. And I have two younger sisters. One is 17 and one is 12. You're one of four. So I'm one of four. Okay. What are your parents' names? My father's name is Mark Watson and my mother's name is Ora Watson. Mark and? Mark and Ora Watson. Ora Watson, okay. And when you grew up uh, in their home, what kind of Jewish home did they have? Uh, we're uh, Orthodox. Um, we, I, I attended synagogue uh, daily, every Shabbat. Um, you know, very traditional, um, very well-run household. That's lovely. Obviously, you have a kosher home. Kosher home. And you yeah. celebrate your Shomer Shabbat. Shomer Shabbat. You celebrate Shabbat Friday night, Saturday. You're, it's, it's shul. You're, and um, what was your high school education? High school, I went to MTA, which yes. is Yeshiva University's high school. Yes. Um, on the same campus. So yes. We got a lot of interaction with the college students, and that uh -huh. was kind of the reason why I wanted to go there so badly. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, when I was 17 years old, my parents decided to make an aliyah, and they moved to Israel. So I skipped senior year in MTA, and I went to Bar Ilan University for the first half of my senior year. In Israel? In Israel. How exciting was that for you? It was incredible. At first, I was a little skeptical. I, I didn't really want to go. I, I, w I wanted to stay back here with Did my you friends, have friends senior sure, year. Sure. Were um, you scared? I was, I was a little bit scared, a little bit intimidated yes. to go into college, you know, a year early. Yes. Um, but How was your Hebrew? My Hebrew was okay, not, not great, but I, I ended up catching on because I forced myself to take two classes there in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. One was statistics and one was Old Pond. How's your Hebrew now? My Hebrew has improved tremendously. Very good. Uh, so how was the year at Bar Ilan? So, so the half year at Bar Ilan was good, um, but at the same time I wanted to get back and be with my friends, so I ended up going back to uh, YU. And, and MTA at the same time because I kind of graduated at that point already um, and I, I stayed here um, and I moved to Queens for that period of time when I was in YU and then uh, later on I moved to, out to the five towns um, with my aunt because my parents were in Israel. That's where they are still to this day? They're still in Israel. In where Shemesh. in Israel? Be They're in Beit Shemesh. Beit Shemesh. Yeah. Very, very nice. Um, and but while I was there, you know, in Israel and in YU, I had a bunch of experiences with nonprofits and charity, which really sparked a fire. And when I went to Israel for the year after YU um, and that summer, I, 
I started the Race to Save Lives for United Soul of Israel. The Race to Save Lives. The Race to Save Lives. What um, is the Race to Save Lives? The, the Race to Save Lives is a 5K race. It was at first for students um, who were in Israel at the time for their year. And they got to spend, they, they got to fundraise and, you know, really understand an organization that's very dear to me. Um, how they operate, how they run, why they're so important. And we ended up raising a quarter of a million dollars our wow, first year. that's fabulous. Now, don't jump ahead of me. Okay. I still want a little bit of your own story. Then we'll come back to okay. the, uh, the race to save lives. I want to understand at what point does Aaron Watson begin to feel close to an affinity for Israel? At what point? I would have to say when my parents moved to Israel. I that started, really sparked it. That really you. sparked it. I, I, we, we took, we've taken many trips to Israel. I think the first time I was there was when I was 11 or 12 years old. Um, you know, I, I definitely developed a connection for Israel then. But I really think I, it sparked a fire when I was about 17, 18, and kind of understood more about Israel and also the Bar Ilan experience, which was a program, actually, you know, they took me on tours and stuff like that. Um, so that also helped out. Okay. I, I, by the way, Haron and I, Aaron and I know each other a bit, and so I, I have a right to say what I'm about to say to him, but I don't <laughs> want it to sound condescending. I'm very proud of you. I'm proud of you because, in essence, you didn't make it sound facile. And we all go to Israel, and we all end up being moved by it. But I really asked you, when did it really touch you in a certain way? And you were honest enough to say, when you lived there, when you spent time there, when you in some way were involved in Jewish life, not as a tourist, not as right. a visitor, it really tended to shape how you view Israel and feel about it, yes? A hundred percent. I think you actually have to, you know, put something down yes. in order to really appreciate it. You can't just visit there and, you know, hop in and hop out. You yes. got to put something down, really, you know, care for it, and then, and then you'll begin to appreciate okay. it more. I've indicated to our audience that the reason I'm wanting to talk to you at this table was because you're not simply a lovely young man who was going to Yeshiva University and studying in finance, but because you have become, for your age group, someone who's really helping to lead the Jewish world and make a contribution to the state of Israel. And the way you're doing that is you become involved in raising money for non Jewish nonprofits that you believe in and that you think are making a, a significant contribution to Israel and Jewish life. Have I said it fairly? 100%. Okay. Yeah. What I really want to understand from you here is the extent to which you feel, and we'll talk, uh, we'll, we'll, we will talk about con, um, substantively what the organizations are that you work for. But I'm trying to understand conceptually how you view your own journey when you compare it with, first, other students of your similar age who are at yeshiva. They're already in the Jewish world, but they're not as involved as you are. And then you also are aware, you are an American Jew of the general American Jewish community and who your peers are who may not be within the Orthodox world as you are, but they're in the Jewish world and they, they care about Israel and they care about Jewishness to a certain degree. And I'm very anxious to hear how you evaluate at the moment the Jewish commitment, the Jewish connection of your age group. And again, it's always, you know, Haron, one tends to always be anecdotal. Well, I know this, I know this because of my personal experience. That is real. But to the extent to which you have sort of a broader perspective, I really want to hear what it is. So let's begin by asking, again, the, the first part of the, let's deal with the first part of the question. As you look at your own life and those students who you're with, what's your sense of where young people are today in terms of Jewishness and their commitment to the state of Israel? Well, I would have to start by saying that I don't know, you know, the entire you know, college age group. Um, in fact, I only know a very small part of the college age group. I think I would uh, have to stick with what I know. Um, so I'd say that the Yeshiva University students, which is where I attend right now, 
Um, they're, they're somewhat committed. They, the, the students are constantly approached by students like myself, uh, friends of mine who are also running similar programs. They have a student body, they have rabbis and other uh, programs that they can get involved with on a daily basis. So th those students are very involved. Um, you know, other, other students who are in uh, colleges like NYU, Columbia are involved as well just because they're touched by, you know, the, the same programs that are going on. I know when I run an event, I always branch out to Columbia, NYU, Queens, um, all the schools in New and York. And there is a response. And there's always a response. Um, kids love jump, to jump on it. Um, so in New York, from what I know, the kids are very involved. Okay, and the way you describe it is very important. I hope our audience hears this. What you, what you have experienced is you reach out to students who are beyond YU, oh, and yeah. you get a positive response. Yeah, in okay. fact, um, this past year, I created a board for, a young leadership board for Shari Tzedek. We had 20 students. Shari Tzedek is a major hospital in Jerusalem, and you've helped raise money for them. Yes. And, uh, the audience knows I'm very partial to Shari Tzedek, both because I spent time there as a patient mm -hmm. and because I believe what they're doing is fabulous, and you believe that also. Yes. So you created a, a leadership board that really helps raise money for Shari Tzedek Hospital. Exactly. So what my, one of my goals was to get out of New York and, and see what we have in doing in California, Florida, Chicago, um, mm -hmm. even in Canada. We went to Toronto, Montreal and you know, some of the major cities out there. And there was a lot of involvement in, you know, like I said, California, we had LA, we had two, two girls who helped out tremendously. They, they raised, I think it was $7,000 between the two of them. And they brought all their friends in. Um, we had Chicago, um, which brought in about $17,000. We had Florida, which brought in seven as well. Um, really, a lot of involvement was from you know the broader group, mm -hmm. um, but I again I don't know how involved Very they fair. are. I understand. Um, but I could say from my end, I have seen involvement. I do know that they are getting involved. You know, in the Jewish world, there's a lot of concern because of this Pew report, and the Pew report basically said that outside of the Orthodox community, there's real concern that the next generation or the generation after that will be intimately involved with Jewish life and care enough about the state of Israel. Is that a concern that you have as well? Um, I'm, not, I'm not so concerned about it. I, I do know that when, whenever I try to set up an event or a program or board, I always get people jumping on it. So I, I have nothing to worry about and in terms of that report. In your experience, Aharon, does it cross movement lines? Is it Orthodox as well as non-Orthodox Jews? Yes, you, I see it on, I, I don't just stick with the Orthodox or non-Orthodox. I go all out. I, I try to diversify as much as I can. I just, I, I think that as many networks as I could tap into, that's, you know, that'll help me out with fundraising. So I definitely try to get out there as much as I can. Okay, it's, it's wonderful to hear this. Where do you think it comes in you? Where does it come that of all the things you want to put your energy into, the thing that is really you're gravitating to is this attempt to help the financial stability of a significant number of Jewish organizations. Why, why is that true about you? Okay, so um, basically I got involved with United Salah of Israel, which is a first response uh, ambicycle unit. Um, they're located in Jerusalem, and they have ambicycles, which are these little bicycles or motorcycle motorbikes, um, and they get around the traffic in Israel very quickly because they're on those bikes, as opposed to ambulances that take 10 or 15 minutes to get to an accident. Um, and you know, uh, right when I got there, I was blown away with the organization, the technology, the ambicycles, everything was so cool. Was, you know, and you know, as a kid, I like I like technology and all yes. the new age stuff. So we, we got to see this place, and um, we decided we were going to make an event, me and my friend Alex Goldberg. Um, and we, we started out with a goal of $25,000, thinking that that was crazy, but that was the amount of money we had to raise to get an ambicycle. And that's you what were we trying to, to raise money for one, for one a ambicycle. ambicycle. Okay, and that's in the range of twenty-five dollars 25000 Okay, and how were you going to do this, Aaron? We 
we got a financial backer to match everything up to $100,000. That was, um, and we basically ended up raising a quarter of a million dollars. And all the kids our age got involved. We had about 500 uh, participants at the race. How do you get 500 kids involved? We, we got every single seminary and yeshiva um, involved. We had one friend of mine or my partner, Alex, went out there, got you know one guy or girl, and they were responsible to bring in their friends from the yeshiva or seminary. And we had about 50 schools, 10 a pop, and it you know, came out to 500. So we got, we got a huge crowd at a quarter million dollars. We, we ended up getting 10 Ambi cycles. And then um, and this the was director, a march you did? A this, walk a, a walk walkathon? Well, it was a wa 5K race. Where Most, was it? I'd Where say 90% of right? the kids ended up walking. 5% <laughs> took taxis <laughs> to the finish line. <laughs> did you do it? I, I did not. I was, I was coordinating. You were an administrator. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Where was the actual uh, route? The actual route was in Gan Soccer. And, and that, that leads me to my story, why I got so involved. When we were planning out the route for the, for the race, I was on the back of an ambicycle with a, an EMT from Hutzala. He got a call on his uh, little cell phone, and he was the closest uh, correspondent to the accident. So he starts, he flicks his sirens on, and he's off. He's going, we're going about 90 kilometers an hour in and out of lanes on the highway, and we arrive at a scene where there's an older lady who's having a seizure. You just, we just saw her shaking, and I, you know, I was terrified. I didn't know what was going on. I was just planning on making a route for a race. And we got, you know, the guy rush, rushes off his ambicycle, takes out a glucose, uh, like some sort of A package. syringe of sorts. Yeah, and he gives it to her. And she stops immediately. And we, you know, remember this took only 90 seconds. Everything was just spinning around in my head. And we see that there's tons of traffic backed up all the way on Highway 1. And we we see that an ambulance was trying to approach, couldn't get there. And I realized like, that this organization is really special. It really gets to the accident right away, and it saves you know, time. You know, there could be neurological damage if, you know, with just seconds. So they really help out. And um, I went uh, later on that year, um, when, after the race happened, the director of Hatsala said, you guys realize what you did? And we're like, yeah, like we, we donated 10 ambicycles. He's like, no, no, no. Like you lowered the response rate in Jerusalem by a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. We're like, wow, that's, that's insane. And it's going to enable us to save more lives. So um, that, that also hit me. And then to further that, I went to uh, Auschwitz with my, with my school in Israel. We went on a trip called Heritage. And of a family friend um, went with their son, the, the father, and the grandfather. And the grandfather told a story about how he was saved in Auschwitz. And that triggered something in my head. I was like, wait, so one life is really, is more than just one life. It's his son and his grandson, who's now my best friend, who actually helped me out with this race. So it's, you know, it's more than just saving one life and more than just saving seconds. It's it's really just like a whole world. So, mm -hmm. so that got me very involved in Israeli healthcare in particular, um, which also led me to Shari Tzedek. Um, they contacted me after the second race to save lives, which we raised three hundred thousand dollars in, had even more students involved in the same park, Gan Soccer, um, and they asked me to run their Bolathon, and eventually Young Leadership Program. Um, they were raising about twenty-eight thousand dollars a year, and I took it up to a hundred. And then the year after, I took it to one hundred eighty thousand. So um, unbelievable! That was how I got started. Okay, Bo, that's a wonderful, wonderful story. And it's interesting for me also to hear that it is the healthcare system of Israel that's really attracted you, which um, my own sense is that the people who are in healthcare are really doing God's work like nobody else. And I, I, I have an enormous regard for doctors, physicians, anybody involved in health care, nurses, those who are involved in supporting doctors and nurses and health care, dentists, all of them. Just 
psychologists, psychiatrists, the whole range. And in the Jewish tradition, the emphasis on health, as you know, is primary. And the Jews have always done some remarkable work in that regard. And if there's, you know, people will say, well, I want a Jewish doctor. And there's mm -hmm. a reason. But it's, it's very interesting to me. And, and also, the story is just a wonderful story. I'm so glad you told it the way you did. Tell our audience, from your perspective, what is it about Israel that you wish everybody, not only your age, but everybody of any age, understood about the state of Israel? What excites you, Haron, about Israel? I don't know if there's just one thing that I could pinpoint. Um, if I had to, I would just go with the overall atmosphere of, of Israel. I don't know if it's necessarily that's if that's the right word, but you know, when you're in New York and you, you you're walking down Fifth Avenue, you're walking, you know, in, in Central Park, you f right now, you feel the holiday spirit. You feel, you know, you feel Christmas, you feel you feel Thanksgiving. When you're in Israel, you feel you feel Hanukkah, you feel, you know, Rosh Hashanah, you feel Yom Kippur. Everyone's all in unison. They're all working together. Um, and I think that's something great. That, that everyone should really kind of experience. That is beautiful. You know, we always talk about Israel as, you know, this little country that's done so marvelously in innovation and technology. Does that side of Israel excite you as well? Yeah, 100%. Um, in fact, you know, every single day I, I go on, you know, Israel National News or whatever it is, and I always, I'm excited to see that almost on a monthly basis or sometimes weekly basis, there's a new invention or... You know, a new company was acquired for a couple hundred million dollars, and you, you really see that the yes. Israelis are really working there yes. and, and innovating out there. Technology that's in your cell phone, you, that you use daily, TVs, everything. They're, they're, really, they're really doing well out there. Yes. And does the fact that in America so much of Israel is related to the way in which the media portrays the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, does that in any way play into your thinking. Do you think that there are young people who are in some way distanced from Israel because of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and the way it's presented in the news? Um, in, in YU, again, from what I know, um, I don't think so, but I could see that in, fr from other kids who might not have you know, a strong background or a full knowledge of what's going on, that they, they do see that, the, you know, there's some sort of problem and they're kind of turned off by it. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, again, I, 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 I see that for the most part. Kids, or at least the Jewish kids, understand what's going on. Um, and, and I know that I've tried in the past to, to work with the Palestinians. We've actually um, donated an ambicycle to the uh, East Jerusalem citizens in, in Israel. And we donated one ambicycle there. How did that come about? Um, it was actually an idea of my friend. It was it was it was not mine. Um, they they just figured you know we want to we want to help out um, everybody. Let's not just focus on you know our people on Jewish on Israelis. Jewish Israelis. Let's focus on everybody. You know it doesn't matter where they're from. If we could if we could um, you know send an ambicycle and get a fast response rate there. You know why not? Let's let's help out. And it actually. Um, I don't know if we actually sparked this, but we, um, or not we, Hatzala, United Hatzala of Israel, is actually trying to branch out to the world now. And, and because I, it's such a great invention that um, I think there, there's a city in New Jersey that's actually looking into it, and um, India is looking into this program, and they're, they're really branching out all over the world. It's not just going to be an Israeli-based mm -hmm. uh, first response unit. Mm -hmm. so. Do you think there's any possibility that one day Israeli Jews and Arab Palestinians will live together in peace? <laughs> I don't know if I'm qualified to answer that, but I, I, I hope so. I hope, you know, they get... They when get you were in Israel and you had friends who were your age but they were Israelis, did you have a sense that they were willing at some point to embrace either a two-state solution or in some way a cooperation between Israeli and Arab? 
Um, you, you hear a lot of different opinions. You know, um, some people are strong. You know, again, one state solution. Some people are like, well, you you know, you got to do two state solution. How can you not do two state solution? Um, you really, it's it's a mix, uh, and I would say it's fifty fifty. It's not it's not you know, one side or the other. At least from you know my experience. Mm -hmm. In your experience, did anything ever happen to you, which caused you either to fear an Arab Israeli or a Palestinian? or to hate an Arab in any way? No. I, I, I've had little interaction, but the interaction that I've had was mostly positive. Again, it was toning this ambi cycle. And, um, I mean, you do see uh, Palestinians all over the place. Um, they actually built my house. Um, and, I've, again, I've only had positive interactions. Incidentally, when I was at Shari Tzedek Hospital, some of the best nurses I had were Arab Israelis, were Palestinians. Right. And one of the things that really impressed me about Shari Tzedek is that if you're in the hospital, and you're, whether you're in a waiting room, whether you're walking around the halls, whether you, there are Arab Israelis, Jewish Israelis, who are side by side in the loveliest way, and the hospital makes no distinction between how they treat a Jewish Israeli or an Arab Israeli, or as the hospital is very proud to say, Palestinians from the West Bank who are not Israeli at all, but they're also treated with respect, with care. They get the same kind of medical care. 100%. And I feel in, in many ways, one of the reasons why I'm a real fan of Shari Tzedek, and it could be true of all hospitals, my experiences with Shari Tzedek, you have other wonderful hospitals in Israel. You have a, the Hadassah Hospital, you have the Rabin Medical Center, you have, uh, again, a, a plethora of outstanding hospitals, but I think Sherrod Tzedek does something very, very special in Jerusalem. Anyway, one of the reasons why I am so enthused by it is because I saw, in, one, in some way, Sherrod Tzedek was a microcosm of the best of what all of us, including Israelis, want Israel to be. And in some way, you're confirming that. Yes, 100%. They don't care who walks through that door. If they have a problem, they're going to fix it. And no matter who you are, they're going to do it the same way. And that's something that I thought uh, was outstanding. If anyone wants to contact you, or if anyone wants to help you in your own activities, if they're your age and they said, I want to be with Aaron, Aharon, let me be part of Aaron Watson's team. How do people get in touch with you? And uh, speak for one moment right to the audience. What would you like them to know, and what, are you, what will you invite them to? Um, well, I have, uh, I run two boards right now. Um, one is the Race to Save Lives boards for United Cell of Israel, and the second one is uh, the Shari Tzedek Young Leadership Board. We would love for anyone to get involved, you know, on any scale, whether it's to, you know, help me with fundraising, help me with getting kids involved, help me with getting the events together. We really could use anyone out there on any scale, and if you'd like to get in touch with me, um, you could contact Mark, you could contact Shari Tzedek, you could contact Hatsala, and they'll put you in touch straight with me. Um, again, you could contact me at any time. Aaron Watson, it's an honor always to be with you. You do fabulous work. You are, in many ways, you are the future of the Jewish community, and it is an honor for you to have, to have you sitting at this table, and I hope you're at, in that chair many, many times. Kol tuv you. Thank you very, you. very Thank much. Thank you for having me. Thank it was you. a pleasure. My conversation with Aaron Watson, and again, as Aaron says, if you want to be in touch with him, just email me, and I will forward your emails on to him. As always, I invite you to be in touch with me with any thoughts or comments you may have to anything that Aaron has said. Please email me, write me, post on our Facebook wall, tweet me. I look forward to hearing from you. Until the next time, I'm Mark Golub. L'chaim, my friends, to life. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support Shalom TV with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double high or more, to the nonprofit organization Jewish Education in Media. Simply visit the Shalom TV website homepage and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check made out to GEM to Jem, 
Post Office Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive on DVD with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support. L'Chaim is a presentation of Jewish education in media.